I'm Chuck. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, I've got to tell you, I'm still a little, a little goofy from uh, from the other day from my April Fools. Had some fun and, and uh, seemed like guys enjoyed it. Um, so uh, got to uh, going to show you a little thing that uh, going to be working on here in the shop, and then uh, uh, also have a story for you. Um, the uh, I'm going to hold this up close to the camera. Uh, two jaw chuck uh, is what this is. Um, it's for the uh, my buddy Chewy for his Stark lathe. Uh, we need to make a uh, tailpiece for it so that he can use it in the tailstock um, on the lathe. And uh, I'm going to pull the camera and show you what I have set up in my lathe, um, and uh, we'll talk about it real quick. Be right back with you. Okay, so a little story here. So in the lathe, I've got a uh, tailpiece that uh, mounted on a chuck for a Stark lathe, um, the backing plate. And it's a one piece. Uh, Chewy had turned this portion down so that he could put it in a collet. And then, of course, here is the taper for the Stark lathe uh, tailstock. So I was uh, indicating the back of the tailstock there uh, so that I could pick up the taper. And the plan is, is we're going to build a new tailpiece for the uh, two jaw for the, uh, the two jaw chuck. We're going to end up uh, boring this uh, and have a press fit there and then we'll have the tailpiece. Well, as you can see, I was, uh, I was uh, working on uh, picking up that taper, and first thing I did was, was to double check here to get, the, get it concentric on where you turn. As you can see, it's, it's not moving a bit. But as you can see on this, on the end of the tailpiece, uh, we're getting um, oh, about six thousandths worth of uh, taper easily six thousandths well i had it set up like this and uh chewy stopped over the house here the shop and since it's his piece i was basically explaining to him where i was and he took the hammer and he was running back and forth on the uh, tailpiece and uh and uh he says well how tight is it and so there's a wrench sitting right here, so he picked up the wrench, loosened my uh, compound, and then touched it, and of course he moved it by a couple of inches. So of course I, uh, I called him a couple of good shop names, going, hey, I spent you know, 15 minutes fooling around chasing this thing, and look what you did. And uh, he chuckled and said, hey, sorry, and, and uh, he took the wrench, tightened up the uh, compound a little bit, uh, moved it, and he put it right where it is. Uh, luck of the draw or a very experienced hand. Of course, he looked at me and smiled and said, uh, I still got it, buddy. And of course, uh, I uh, had some other adjectives for him. Um, but anyway, uh, he did, he put it, he put it pretty much on. Um, the, now it still, still has some movement uh, being that of concentric, but we're gonna, we're gonna live with it right there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy that taper and make the uh, tailpiece form. So anyway, I thought I'd uh, show you guys that and uh, uh, maybe you'll end up seeing the finished product when it's done. All right, be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. Um, let me just uh, adjust the camera here for a second. Make sure I'm in frame there. Yeah, so um, as I said, I'm still feeling a little goofy from uh, April Fool's Day, but I thought I'd uh, share a story with you. Um, there was this uh, machinist that um, happened to uh, be very close to the zoo. His, his shop was very close to the zoo. And whenever they had a waiting on parts or waiting on material to be delivered, uh, he would, uh, or take his lunch, he would uh, wander off to the zoo. And uh, it was a usual thing for him. And 
one day he was over there in front of the gorilla cage and uh, he was he was standing there and uh, kind of wiped his nose a little bit and kind of noticed the gorilla wiped his nose did the same thing so that's odd and so he kind of bumped his chin again and, and the gorilla bumped his chin well wow this is pretty interesting well the gorilla comes up to the front of the cage and so you know he, he rubs his nose again and the gorilla rubs his nose he kind of rubs his ear and the gorilla rubs his ear now, this is amazing he covers his eye next thing he wakes up in the hospital and he's just beat to hell he comes kind of coming to and he looks at the nurse and he goes what happened what, what am I doing here how did I get here and the nurse said well that gorilla attacked you he says the gorilla attacked me because I don't even have any recollection of that what what do you mean why would the gorilla attack me and he, she goes I have no clue but the zoo officials are here they want to talk to you find out what the heck you did something you did to that gorilla he said well I didn't do anything but have him come in so the zoo officials came in and asked you know what'd you do with the gorilla he says oh I, I don't know I was there in front of the cage and you know, I've been there before and I noticed uh, oh, I, I think I rubbed my chin and and the gorilla rubbed his chin and then I kind of wiped my nose and the gorilla wiped his nose and he, and he says, uh, and then I, I covered my eye. And, and the zoo officials went, oh, no wonder. Now, now we know what the hell happened. He goes, what are you talking about, what the hell happened? And he says, well, he says, well that is F.U. and gorilla talk. He goes, how in the heck do I know that? you got to be kidding me. Well, zoo officials leave. They're going to leave the guy alone. And he goes back to work. And he's stewing. This guy machinist is just an old school guy and he's stewing in the shop so he goes I'm gonna I'm gonna fix him so he leaves the shop and he goes down to the to the gorilla's cage and he walks up and he sees the gorilla and the gorilla looks at him and and uh, he, uh, he rubs his ear and the gorilla just sits in the back of the cage kind of hunkers back won't, won't pay any attention to him and he keeps, you know, making monkey shines, and the gorilla won't uh, won't uh, deal with him at all. Well, but the gorilla's watching him the whole time. So he got right up in front of the cage, and and he, you know, he motioned to the gorilla to come. The gorilla shook his head, mm, no, he won't come. Well, he still had his he still had his shop apron on and everything. So he uh, he stands in front of the gorilla, and he and. Uh, he, op he pulls out of his, uh, his pocket, out of his pouch, he pulls out a barbershop razor. And he pulls it out, opens it up, shows him, closes it back down, and he sets it on the edge of the cage. And the gorilla looks at him, it won't even move. Well, to entice the gorilla some more, he came up there and he pulled his, pulled his shop apron back and he pulled out a big salami. And the gorilla, the gorilla looked at him. And he then reached over, took that straight razor, opened it up, took that salami and chop, 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 chop the living hell out of that salami. He closed that razor blade back down, put it back at the edge of the cage. Well, that gorilla comes up to the front of the cage and he's looking at him. He's looking at the salami and he's looking at the straight razor. He's looking at him, looking at the straight razor. And he takes the straight razor and he opens it up, and he looks at it, and he looks at the machinist, and he goes, That's my story. <laughs> so, let me finish with this story. That was from, oh, about 40 years ago, back in high school. And this, I uh, won't keep doing it to you guys, but that's been hanging around me, my friends, my family, my work for 40 years. Um, uh, my buddy and I, when we'd go out on double dates, things weren't going good, there would be the sign. Uh, things in school weren't going good in the classroom, there would be the sign. Um, as life went on, uh, 
I still remember one day being at the drag races with my buddy. I'm sitting on his tail, tailgate of his truck waiting to bring him up to the starting line. He's sitting in his car all helmeted up waiting, waiting to go and he looks at me and gives me the sign. Hadn't seen it from him in 15 years. Just started laughing like hell. My own kids, uh, as they played sports, as they got into their early teens, they'd be out in the center field or on the basketball court not enjoying life and they'd look at me in the stands and give me the sign. My neighbor drives by, gives me the sign. My workers at work <laughs> give me the sign. Uh, actually, my neighbor usually drives by and goes like that at me. So uh, anyway, it's a lot of fun. Um, so uh, you may uh, have a little communication with me every now and then. Um, I even uh, have a little uh, embellishment here. Um, in sports, I did very well in high school, and I was actually on the local uh, news channel. And uh, my buddies were telling me that I had to give them the sign, and, and uh, I did do that uh, as they were interviewing me that night. Um, so anyway, a little bit more of Outside Screwball. Uh, hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll be back with you soon. Take care.